A Chinese car from Saik in China, the company that owned the brand MG, just drove 2,208 kilometers on a single charge. So just before you go, it's not fully electric. I admit that. I very rarely talk about it. So don't go. Give it a chance because it's pretty fascinating, honestly. So if you went from LA in America all the way to New York, you'd stop once briefly in Nebraska to refill and keep going. That's pretty cool. This is just an interesting point, though. It's like a thought-provoking exercise, this. Uh, this is why I want to talk about it today. So the row I can't say it, the row D7 DMH just made headlines by setting a Guinness World Record, uh, you know, going the longest distance on a single tank slash charge for a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. And it drove across China and it went, just for perspective as well, I'll put on screen, this is a journey I've done quite a few times in my life. Uh, for example, in my Toyota Prius in 2013, I did it then as well. That was very good. I did a thousand kilometers uh, without stopping in that one. 27 hour trip from uh, my home in Norway all the way through Europe, through seven countries uh, to get to the middle of England, basically. So this journey is a very, very big journey. By the way, if you do go through Belgium, you should stop at this coffee shop. This is my favorite coffee shop and the lady is very, very nice. And it's really nice if you like old things. So basically, the journey spanned from a place called, this is where it gets tricky, I don't speak Chinese, Lanzhou to Urumqi, Urumqi, over four days, passing through some iconic and challenging uh, locations like uh, these, this place, I'll put it on screen now, and this place, I'll put it on screen now. I'm not going to try and say those things. I'm not going to make a fool of myself on the internet. And uh, scorching deserts of Tupan, really, really hot. So it went from as low as minus eight to in the 30s on this trip in a period of four days. So yeah, China's pretty big. It's pretty crazy. It has, just like Australia, you know, it's not always hot. There are actually uh, alpine regions in Australia where you can be warm and sunny at the bottom and in a snowy mountain resort and go skiing, uh, you know, in the middle of the day after a couple of hours drive. A bit weird, that's how big it is. So the uh, D7 DMH, He's designed to maximise efficiency more so than any other plug-in hybrid electric vehicle using a 1.5 litre petrol engine that achieves 43% thermal efficiency and incorporates hybrid technology to stay in fuel saving mode 85% uh, of the time, apparently. Whatever that exactly means, I don't know. It is equipped with a coaxial electric drive unit and combines a one-speed hybrid transmission with a power with powerful torque from its single motor mounted on the front of the car overall it managed consumption rate of two and a half or 2.49 liters per hundred kilometers on this trip which is quite good i think given that it's a 1.7 ton vehicle that is quite heavy really i mean not in there you know if, if it had a really big battery Maybe you wouldn't say that, but it is a hybrid. So for a, a hybrid, like a, you know, a Toyota Prius or uh, for this car, what it is, that's, you know, it's fairly heavy, I suppose. That's kind of like Volvo S40 sort of heavy. It's, it's pretty heavy. The reason why I want to talk about this is because this brings around a question. How much range is enough? What about those people in, say, uh, the middle of Aust Australia, the middle of America, but they want to get a hybrid or electric car, but the electric cars, you know, four or five, six hundred mile uh, kilometer range, that's not necessarily enough for a lot of people. This might not be something that everyone's experienced, but I've experienced going down uh, into rural Australia, down, say, through inland to Melbourne. It's very rural. You can go hours and hours and hours and see basically no cars or anything for a, like a long trip. So for a lot of people, hybrids do still make sense. They really do, even if they want to drive a big like a Tesla and they just want something with a big range. It, it, is a, it is a compelling argument, but how much range is the sweet spot for you? This is an, a, a question I've, loved, I've, I've wanted to ask for a long time. How much is it? I would say that 400, 450 kilometer range for me in a BYD Delphin seems really good. That seems pretty usable. A thousand is better, but 450, that is also quite a lot, isn't it? So what would you say is the sweet spot? What would you start to say is the, uh, it's getting ridiculous, but it's kind of your dream range in your car. Let me know in the comments below. I'm really, really keen to see how many people are gonna say, uh, you know, 600 or a thousand, or maybe does anybody go over a thousand? I have no idea. This was a bit of a different video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. My name is Ben Alexander and I make EV news videos every day. This is the first time in months I've mentioned something other than a full electric vehicle. 
So uh, yeah, don't let that stop you subscribing. Please uh, feel free to.